This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Hey, I'm going to have a shout out to Rabbi Sai. Parshas Tetzave. Rabbi Sai, we know uh, in this year it's never too early to start preparing for Purim. So uh, we're going to learn uh, in Yanni Purim, but we'll see what it has to do with Parshas Tetzave. So in uh, the Megillah Sester, we know the well known characters. Of course, you have Mordechai, Esther, Haman, even Zeresh, of course, Achashverosh. But there's a little known um, figure in the Megillah, Vatikra Esther Lahasach. Esther calls Hasach. And we know who is Hasach. Hasach, the Gemara tells us, is Daniel. So the Gemara Megillah, Dav Tezvav, Vatikra Esther Lahasach, Amarav, Hasach Ze Daniel. Velama Nikra Shemai Hasach. Why is he called Asach? Shechatchu migdulasa, he was cut off from his godless. In other words, he was fired. Nebuchadnezzar fired him. Shmuel Amar, Shekol Divrei Malchus, Nechtachin Alpiv. Shmuel says all the words of the king were cut by him. In other words, everything took place through him. So let's try to understand where in the world does Daniel come into the Purim story? Well, what's he got to do with anything? No, you have Mordechai on the Antic Nesel HaGdoyla. He raises Esther. And Esther sends Hasach. Why, why is Daniel, what is his role in the story of Purim? How does he make it into the Megillah? And Bechlal, you know, he's called Daniel like a hundred times and say for Daniel, Vasepis over here, all of a sudden, we can't call him by his name. Why well, Give him his name. His name is Daniel. Why do we have to call him Dafka Megillah's Esther Hasach? Okay. So call him uh, Agent uh, Agent MS. I don't know. So we also know that one of the things that really provoked the whole episode to the point where it got Klal Yisrael angry was the fact that Mordechai did not want to bow down to Haman. In fact, the Pasuk says, Ish Yehudi Haya V'shushan Abira Ish Yemini. The Gemara asks, Ish Yehudi, Ish Yemini. What does one have to do with the other? Either he's from Shevet Yehuda or he's from Shevet Binyamin. And the Gemara says in Megillah that they said, Ruma Asalanu Ben Yehudi Zeh, Ben Yemini Zeh. In other words, they were very upset at Mordechai for not bowing down to Haman. They felt Mordechai should have bowed down to Haman. The, the Klai so felt that Mordechai provoked Haman. What's, why can't you bow down to him? He's not an Avoid Zara, he's a person. He's not, he's not a lav. So they were angry at Mordechai for not bowing down to Haman. Right? But of course the Pasuk says, HaMelech, Asher B'Shar HaMelech, Koi Re'im Mishar L'Haman, Ki Chein Tziv Eloi HaMelech, O Mordechai, Lo Yichra, Lo Yishtach Why? So the Chida comes in the Midbar Kedemois, and the Chida tells us a big side, and the Chida says Mordechai was the Gilgal of none other than Yaakov Avinu. That Mordechai is the Gilgal of Yaakov. And Haman is the Gilgal of Esav. In fact, interestingly, one of the tefillahs that Yaakov Avinu offered upon encountering Esav, Hatsileini na miyadachi miyad Esav. And the Balaturim says, Hatsileini na miyad, Rashi Tevois. Hatsileini na miyad, Haman. Look at number seven, Rashi Tevois Haman. So Yaakov, you know, as he's approaching Esav, he's not only davening that Hashem should save him from Esav, he's actually davening that Hashem should save his Gilgal, Mordechai, from Haman's, from Esav's Gilgal, Haman. Umeah. The question is, what do you mean Mordechai is the Gilgal of Yaakov? Why did Yaakov have to come back? Umeah, Shepagam Yaakov. Yaakov did an Avera. He bowed down to Esav seven times. Like the Pasuk says, Ah, therefore, Yaakov did something wrong. 
What did he do wrong? He bowed down to Esau. So to be Masake and Yaakov bowing down to Esau, Mordechai, the Gilgal of Yaakov, does not bow down to Haman, the Gilgal of Esau. Vezeh haya siba le Mordechai le hachnes kol Yisrael b'sakana gedoyla. We know that Mordechai, by not bowing down to Esau, he put Klal Yisrael in great peril. He jeopardized their life. Why did he do it? The answer is he knew he had a mission in life to be Masaki in the infraction of Yaakov Avinu, and therefore he did not bow down to Haman. Vehatam Keniskal El Adkan Lashoinoi. Says the Chida, by the way, this is not what I'm telling you, says the Chida. This is in the Sefer of Erche Hakinuyim Laharamaz. In the Sefer Erche Hakinuyim of Ramaz, Rav Moshe Zachusa. Rav Moshe Zachusa. In fact, in fact, you have the Sefer? No, I don't. In fact, this fits in very well. Here, Yaakov Avinu is coming to encounter Esav. Yaakov Avinu, realizing that his Gilgal, Mordechai, is going to encounter Haman. So he davens very beautifully. Why is Yaakov Avinu davening? Now, Stam, he sees Baruch HaKodesh, there's another troublemaker in history? No. He understands that his Gilgal, Mordechai, is going to encounter the Gilgal of the person who he's about to encounter. Oh, and, what? Well, what? Very nice, but, uh, um, so we'll see. He still shouldn't have done it. You don't bow down to a human being. It's not the right thing. He did it seven times. Still, it was not considered proper. And therefore, nobody asked him to bow down. Esau didn't make a decree he asked to bow down. He offered on his own. Who told him to do that? It was not appropriate. Says the Likute Mamarim Shvile Pinchas. This is in the newest volume, which is actually the oldest volume of Tavshin Samaches, um, of Rev Pinchas Friedman. He points out that in the end, not only was Hashem Mechabal the tefillah of Yaakov to save Klai Yisrael from the Gzair of Haman, Yaakov himself, in other words, Yaakov himself rectified the danger. Why? Because Yaakov Avinu was Mordechai, and Mordechai was the one who didn't bow down, so he ended up um, causing Klai Yisrael to, to uh, be able to do tshuva. Here's the problem. Yaakov Avinu bows down to Esau. So you say, how could he do that? You say, what? I contend it was a mitzvah for him to bow down to Esau. Mitzvah to bow down to Esau? That's right. Because, of course, you know the Zayar HaKadosh. You learned it. At least in utero you learned it. The Zayar HaKadosh says in Pashas Vayishlach, on the words, look at number nine, who Avar Lefneim, he passed before them, literally means Esau. But everybody knows from the Shir Ani Vahoy, who is who's who? Hashem says the Zayar. Vuavar lefnei ma yishtachu arts Hashem from ma gishtei yarochem Reb Lozer pasal v'yomer ki lois yishtachu ve'ale el acher ki Hashem kano shemoi v'chi Yaakov diu shleima de Avon Yaakov who is the most perfect of all our forefathers this Baruch Chulko shlemta la Kadosh Baruch Hu diu iskarv legabe yatir. He was the closest Hashem. Hech sogi leila who rasha the Esav. How could he bow down to Esav? Do you besitcho the elacher? Esav's on the dark side. Uman the sogi leila sogi leilacher. You bow down to Esav. It's like bowing down to the malach hamoves. Elamai Chazal say a fox in his moment bow down to him. It's not true. Esav is like a foreign god. Yaakov would not, never bow down to the dark side. Says the Zoyar. This is the secret of the pasuk. Va'amartem koy lachoy v'yatosh shalom ubeischa shalom mechal asher lachas shalom. Which means you're not allowed to be maktim shalom to a rasha. So how could David say this to Navel? The answer is he had in mind Hashem. Says the Zayar when the pasuk says in Parshas Vayichi, Vayishtachu Yisrael al Rosh Hamita. You think he bowed down to his son? He bowed down to the Shechina that I was at the head of the bed. Says the Zayar, V'hu avar lefneim. What's the who? The who is Ani v'hoi. Hashem. Yaakov was bowing down to Hashem because he saw Hashem right there. So Yaakov was not bowing down to Esav. Yaakov was bowing down to the Shechina. When Yaakov saw the Shechina passing by, 
he bowed down to the Shechina seven times. Right? That's why it says, Bu'avar lefneim, Vayishtachu artsa sheva pa'amim. He bowed down. Doesn't say he bowed down to his brother. He bowed down until he got to his brother. That's why it doesn't say, Kivan dechama deha kutubicha azal kamei. Kedin sagi lekavu, he bowed down to Hashem. Why? Because there's nobody worthwhile bowing down to other to, other to Hashem. Praiseworthy are the tzaddikim. They don't bow down to anybody. They only bow down to Hashem. And therefore, ask the Chida, based on this Zayar, that Yaakov Avinu is bowing down to the Shechina, what do you have to rectify? Why is Yaakov at fault for bowing down for to Esav? He wasn't bowing down to Esav, he was bowing down to the Shechina. So why does he have to come back in the guise of Mordechai and not bow down to Haman? He, he was bowing down to Hashem. Ask the chida. Look at number one. The chor hayer kasha midivay hazayar. The karmid hashchina arvul levan v'shtach l'shchina. So what did he do wrong? You have to say like this. The answer is maris ayin. Yaakov saw the shchina. The shvatim says the chida did not see the shchina. So to the shvatim it looked like Yaakov was bowing down to Esav, to the dark side, to the yel achar, and therefore basically the avera of Yaakov was. Maris Ayin, the Hashvatim lo yodu, Shashchin over lefneim, and they thought Yaakov was bowing down to Esav. Therefore, they also bow down to Esav. And the, the, since Hashem is vedaktik, the tzaddikim chadasara, so it's like Yaakov really bowing down to Esav. By the way, this answer the chida, we could find it exactly in the sefer. Look at number twelve. Maimer Chikar Hadin. Who wrote Maimer Chikar Hadin? The Ramami Panoi, the Ramami Panoi writes, "V'yafal pisha kulam lo yishtachvu ela l'shchina k'derei hazoyar." He darshens v'hu aver lefneim like ani v'hoy oshiona. Mikomakom yesh boy mishum maris ha'ayin. We got a, we got a, an appearance problem. It's all a matter of the way things look. It doesn't look good. So comes the Shvile Pinchas and he asks the following question. It doesn't look good. So you know who we have a question on now? Hashem. So what was Hashem doing there then? Why did Hashem appear before Yaakov Avinu? Did Hashem want Yaakov to bow down to him? If he wanted him to bow down to him, then Yaakov did the right thing. And if he didn't want him to bow down to him, what's he, what's he coming for? Well, he's, trying, he's trying to be machshul him. You know, what does Hashem want here? If Hashem wants him to bow down, then he bowed down. So why does he have to come back as Mordechai and rectify it? Elamai doesn't want him to bow down. What's he doing there? So ask the Shvile Pinchas. Look at number 13. Amnam. Kashin is born in There's a plea at Suma. If Yaakov Avinu saw the Shechina, that means he saw that he wants Hashem, that Hashem wants him to bow down. Otherwise, what's Hashem doing there? So Ramon of Shach. If there's Maris Hayin, what's the Shechina doing there? Elamai. Hashem wants him to bow down. So what does he have to rectify it? Another question. Yaakov Avinu is being mispalel. Hatsileni nam yadachim yad Esav. Yeah? That means he understands that they're going to have trouble with Haman. So Yaakov, I have a good idea. Instead of davening that they be saved from Haman, don't bow down and that they won't have to be saved. <laughs> the, whole, the whole problem with Haman came as a result of the fact that Yaakov bowed down to Esav so now we have to come back and we have to replay the scenario and Mordechai not bow down to Haman so Yaakov don't daven have a better solution don't put them in jeopardy and then daven don't bow down to him and then you won't have to daven oh Yaakov you know, is that here I'm going to come do an Avera and then I'm going to daven to save them don't do Michael Taivas don't do the Avera and don't daven for us but why? Why the only reason Haman wanted to kill everyone is because the re- they have to rectify the Avera of Yaakov of bowing down to Esau. So don't bow down. 
don't bow down to Esav and then don't pray. Don't do. Correct. Don't. Just they were Jewish. The only reason Haman has the ability to do that is because of Yaakov's infraction. So don't commit the sin and don't pray. Michael Tavis. With uh, with friends like that, I don't need you to. Do, don't get me in trouble and pray for me. Just leave me alone. Okay. See, I know you're bothered. What in the world does that have to do with Pasha Tzatzava? I don't want to hear about Purim. I want to hear about Pasha Tzatzava. It's not true. You want to hear about Purim. But I'll tell you about Pasha Tzatzava anyway. There's a famous Gemara in Megillah, Daf Yud Beis Amenaf, one of the most famous Gemaras in Shas. Sha'alu Tamid of Shimbar Yechai. Why did the Jewish people warrant to be destroyed in the times of Haman? Neiman is Chayvu Seneim Shayisov Shabbat Zadar Klaya. So Shimbar Yechai said, like a good Rebbe, I'm not telling you, you tell me. So they said, because they were nana for the Suda of Achashverosh. So Shem Rechaz says, yeah, that can't be the reason. Then only the Jews in Shushan should have been uh, worthy to be destroyed, not Jews in the whole world. So they said, Rebbe, you tell us. So he said, because they bowed down to the Tselem. They bowed down to Havodazar. So they said, Rebbe, that can't be. V'chiyeza masay panam yesh bedavar. Then why would Hashem show them favoritism if they were Nechshon and Avodah Zarah? Says Hashem Barichai, they only acted lefanim, outwardly. They did not really intend to bow down to the Avodah Zarah. Therefore Hashem also made a decree outwardly to destroy them, but inwardly He never meant it. In other words, they sinned on the outside. And therefore Hashem also only made a superficial decree, but He never he was going to rescind it. Rabbi said, let me tell you a little story. Now that we're talking about the Tselem of Nebuchadnezzar, I want to tell you a little bit about this Tselem. Okay, we have an account over here in Shir Hashirim Rabbah, Tarek Zayin, Oisiyadalad. Maybe it's a little story that you may not be so familiar with. And it goes like this. This is how Nebuchadnezzar tried to seduce Daniel. You're not going to bow down to the Selim? It's a real Avayda Zara. You know what? Come see what the Tselem does. You'll bow down to it on its own. Okay, now pay attention. And he put it in the mouth of the Tselem. And they gather, he gathered many musicians. And all of a sudden, the Selim opened up its mouth. Anoichi Hashem Eloikech. So imagine the statue, like, ten stories tall. So, okay, who's going to bow down to it? But when it opens up its mouth, in an authentic voice, right? And he says, Anoichi Hashem Eloikech. And then, hey, we heard that before. That's what God told us on our Sinai. In the same voice. Daniel said, Wow, this is really God. Can I please jump up and kiss the Avodah on its mouth? So Nebuchadnezzar was very pleased. He said, Sure, that's what I was hoping for. He said, Why in its mouth? Because he's speaking so beautifully. He gave him permission and he went up. And Daniel climbed up a ladder and he did the following. He went up to the mouth of the Tselem, and he made the Tzitz take an oath. And he said to it, I am flesh and blood, I am the messenger of Hashem. Tzitz, don't Cause a chil Hashem. The guys are Aniel of Zdavah Acharoi. I don't care who you are. You could be the tzitz. You're coming to me. And Daniel made believe he was going to give uh, the the tzelem a nice wet kiss. Ella, 
he, a bull and ash guy, he grabbed the tzitz out of the mouth of the tzitz, like tzitz, bilo mitachpiv, min denachas, when he came down, all the musicians started playing. Miskanchen called Zine Zimra, Vahava Makaz, and Moi, Vahava Avikloam. See, Daniel did, he made believe he was kissing the tzitz, and really he took out the tzitz. What happened? Says the Medrash, Vloi Hava Avikloam, the tzitz stopped talking, but Oisisha Hippola Ruach has a tzitz. All of a sudden, a big wind came. And you know what the wind did? Knocked the tzellim over. And the tzellim, tzellim fell fat up, flat on its head. The cave in Shiro Umay Sa'ilam, Nisim Agvur Shasa Kadash Borchim, Hanani Vachaberov, when the nations world saw all these miracles, Havanosvin Yas Ta'avasan Vashabrun Yas Hain. They took all their Avadiza, they broke it, and they made bells to put on their dogs and their donkeys. And they would bow down. And they, and they would say, look what we used to bow down to for, look what nonsense it was. By the way, the, uh, the Arizal adds that in Likutei Torah and Parshas Noyach, that Nebuchadnezzar made the Tzalem with Shema Saktoishim, he took the Tzitz of the Kain Gadol, where the Shema Mefurash was engraved on it, and the, tz- the Tzalem would say, Anoichi Hashem Alekecha. Now the truth was it was the Shem HaMafayrosh that was speaking, but the Jews thought that Selim was speaking. What did Daniel do? He climbed up a ladder, and he said he wanted to kiss it, and when he kissed it, he removed the tzitz, and the, the Selim fell. The Arizal adds, it was 60 amos long and 6 amos wide. It says, this is the account of the Medrash and the Arizal. Comes the Vilna Gain. Ready for this? Amazing remez. You look in Parshas Vashanan. And the Pasuk says, V'heifitz Hashem eschem bo'amim v'nishartem misei misvar bagoyim asher yinaheg Hashem eschem shama Hashem's going to scatter you all over the world. V'avad etem sham Elohim you're going to serve Avodah Zarah Masei yidei adam Eitz v'evan asher lo yirun v'lo yishmon v'lo yoichlon v'lo yirichon Now Avodah Zarah can't see can't hear can't eat and can't smell you're asking, why am I stopping? That's not the end of an aliyah. On Tisha B'av, it's the end of the aliyah. <laughs> but by the way, comes the Vilna Gai and he says, very nice, but the Pasuk left out a word. Because in Tehillim we say, about Avodah Zara, Pelohem, Glayda Beiru, and here we say four of the five senses. They don't see, and they don't hear, and they don't eat, and they don't smell. Well, why don't we say, Pelohem v'layidabiru? The answer is, says the Goyen, this prophecy is talking about a very specific Golos. Which Golos is this talking about? This is talking about Golos Babel. And Golos Babel, you can't say about the Avoy de Zara, that Pelahem Velo Yedabeiru, because that Avoy de Zara, Pelahem Vedabeiru. But, they don't see, it doesn't see, it didn't hear, it didn't eat, and it didn't smell. Says the Goyen, what does the Pasuk say about this Avoy de Zara, that it couldn't do anything but speak? Uvi Kashtem Isham, you're going to seek out. Es Hashem Elekecha, the name of God that's in the Avoy de Zara, like Daniel did. And you remove the name, and then you'll find Hashem, you realize that Avodah Zarah is nonsense. Wow. So that's a remez to this episode, says the guy. Well, it says the Likutei Ma... No, now, did you chap yet what this has to do with Parshat Sava? No. Parshat Sava talks about the tzitz. It's all about the tzitz. And you read about the tzitz and you want to know, what was the Kedusha of the tzitz? Well, let me tell you something. If you take the tzitz, don't... I'm not saying, I'm not recommending this. I'm just saying that if you were to take the tzitz and put it in a tzalem, the tzalem could talk. That's how holy the tzitz was. It could say, You have to be careful what you do with the tzitz. By the way, just want you to know that every day you put something on much greater than the tzitz. Tefillin. Say, well, tfilin? Who says the tefillin is greater than the tzitz? Says the Gemara in Yuma, Zayinam and Beis, that a person, you're not to be Mesiach, that's not on the sheet. You're not to be Mesiach, that's from tefillin. Why? Kavachoymer from the tzitz. Ma, the tzitz, which only has one azkara of Hashem's name. You can't be, be Mesiach, that's because it says Tamid. Tefillin. That it says Hashem's name many times. How many times? 21 in the Shalyat. 21 in the Shalraj. Kavachoymer, you can't be Mesiach, that's from tefillin. 
In other words, if the Kohen Gadol was now to text while he was wearing his tzitz, it, was, it would have been an Isser Dairaisa for the Kohen Gadol to text while he's wearing the tzitz. Kavachomer, to answer a telephone and fill in, it's Kavachomer in Isser Dairaisa. It's Menachas Lam Vav? It's my Bar It was my Bar Mitzvah. Shetel? It's also in Yuma Zainam Aveh is going on to Chesam and Aleph. Okay. <laughs> but, by the way, so, but you see from here, so I would say, what kind of Kavachomer is that? The Kain Gadol, he's the holy man. So, why don't we make a Pircha on the Kavachomer? Malak Kain Gadol, that he's a holy guy. Well, I'm, a, I'm just, I'm a nobody. You see, now Hashem doesn't think you're nobody. In the eyes of Hashem, that's not a Pircha. You have a Neshama, you have a Chelik al Kamimal, your Tefillin is holier than the Tzitz. Just think, can I do this in my Tefillin? Whatever you think you could do in the tzitz, that's what you could do in your tefillin. But anyway, that's just a side point. It's a side point. So comes the Shvilei Pinchas. I'm sorry, I'm, there's a, um, a whole thing here. The Shvilei Pinchas says like this. Based on this hakdama, maybe we could give some kind of rationale why Klal Yisrael in, indeed bowed down to the Tzelem in the time of the Bukhanetzar. Why'd they fall for it? Why'd they bow down? It could be the same way Yaakov Avinu... Why did Yaakov Avinu bow down to Esav? No, why did Yaakov Avinu bow down to Esav? The who of our Lefneim, he wasn't. The Zayar says he was bowing down to Hashem. So too, Klal Yisrael in the times of Nebuchadnezzar, it could be, they weren't Nechshon Avay the Zara. They knew, maybe they knew what was inside. They knew there was a tzitz of Hashem with the Shem HaMafayrosh in it. Maybe that's why they were bowing down. Maybe that was a rational now. Maybe that was their their uh, rationalization, justification. How would they have known that? Through Mar Oh, but the problem is it was Mar So we could say like this: Says Reb Shimon Bar Yochai, Heim lo yasu elo lefanim. The Jewish people in that generation, we always translate that outwardly. Why do we translate that that? Because that's what it says in the Schadenstein edition, outwardly. <laughs> But it, the word outward is not always, you know, when you want to say something is on the outside, you say lefanim? You say mibachutz. Yeah. Lefanim also can mean what? The face. Or on the outside. In other words, they were not really bowing down to the Avodah Zara. They were bowing down to the panim, to what was in the panim, to the tzitz, which was on the outside. Why did Esther call Hasach? Chazal say, why is he called Hasach? She called Divrei Malchus Nechtachin Alpiv. All the words of the king were decided by him. That's the literal interpretation. But Esther knew, Baruch HaKodesh, that why was there a decree on Klal Yisrael? Because they bowed down to the Tzelem. But they didn't really mean to bow down to the Tzelem. What were they bowing down to? To the Tzitz. Don't so, but at least they weren't bowing down to Havoy the Zara, they were bowing down to the Shem Hashem. So Esther, her plan was to send Daniel. Daniel was the one who silenced the tzitz. So this way, by involving Daniel in the story, he's the one who knew the true story that the tzitz was in the Tzalem. And that is why in this instance he's called the, the Hasach. Why? She called Divrei Malchus Nechtach in Alpiv. What's called Divrei Malchus? When that Selem spoke out, Anoichi Hashem Lekecha. In other words, he was proclaiming his Malucha. That was stopped through the mouth of Daniel. In other words, you know what I mean? She called Divrei Malchus. When that Selem opened up its mouth to say, I'm God, Anoichi Hashem Lekecha. Nechtachin, that was cut off al piv through the mouth of Daniel. Daniel said, "Cut it out! Cut it out! Stop! Stop fooling around with the tzitz. That was enough already." That's why in this case Daniel is called Hasach. Why? Because he's the one who put an end to the uh, the trick of that selam with the tzitz. Okay, Rabbi Say, Purim is coming, so we're going to venture a little bit further, perhaps, than we would usually go. Even though that's pretty far. <laughs> what? Just a tzitz. Just a tzitz. Hopefully that's good enough. 
We're gonna we're gonna quote today from the Baal Shem Tov and the Talmud Baal Shem. The only question I ask you, Rabbi, why would we work a lot to make a shulah Hashem go to the neighbor to Hashem doesn't command. It says Hashem doesn't let him talk. Why would he allow that his name should be Chalashim Shemayim to talk? It says Hashem doesn't what? It says doesn't talk. Right here. So why did Hashem allow it? Let's try to understand this. There's a mission of a Sachta Rosh Hashanah and Daf Chav Tes. Look at number twenty-one. Okay, this, the next idea is a classic idea in the Sifre Chasidos. The, the halacha is a cheirei shoyte v'katan, a deaf mute, an imbecile, a minor, cannot be moitzi the rabbim their chiyav, right? They can't be a chazan. Why? Zeh haklal, kol she'enoi mechuyav b'davar, enoi moitzi as harabim yidei chayvasan. If you're not chayiv in something, you can't fulfill someone else's obligation. Well, the Baal Shem and his Talmidim, the Taldos Yaakov Yosef, they interpret this api chasidus with the following idea. That tzaddikim are able to be masakein averos of a generation. Tzaddikim are, through their avoid, are able to rectify and correct and so forth. But a tzaddik that has no connection to the generation at all cannot rectify the aver of that generation. It's only if the tzaddik, it's only if the tzaddik is a nichshol in that avera, then while they're correcting their avera, they could correct the avera of the tzibor. But they have to be nichshol in a similar avera, not not mamish the same avera, not to the extent. But if the tzaddik is perfect. And the tzibur is rotten. The tzaddik cannot help him masak in a generation. It's only when the tzaddik is somewhat nichshal in that avera, he's able, while he's being masak in his own avera, to masak in the avera of the tzibur. And this is how they interpret the rule: Kol she'enoi mechuyav b'davar einay moitzi yidei rabim moitzi es harabim yidei chayvasan. It's only someone who's mechuyav. It's only someone who has a lacking in that Indian, They could rectify the tzibur's avera. By, by the way, well, for example, look, look at number 22 in the Todas Yaakov Yosef. He says, with this we could explain the language of the Tana, because based on the well-known idea, he says, when the, the, the God of Hadar finds that he's an Adam Shalem, if he's going to want to connect to the Tzibor, he has to have some similar fault to the tzibur in order to rectify it. The only someone who is mechuyev v'davar, in other words, has some type of similar infraction, can be moitzer ram Let me give you a case in point. Klal Yisrael serve the Egal. That's Avay Zara. They need kapara. Who's going to be mechaper for them? Moshe. <coughs> Moshe! Moshe's perfect! How is he going to rectify that? So what does Moshe do? He breaks the luchos. The kol hameshaber kelim bechamosoi. It's you oy yeh beinecha koy v'davodizara. Chazal say that if you do something in anger, it's like idolatry. So why did Moshe break the luchos? Because Moshe said, "How am I going to correct the avera of avodizara? The only way is to have at least a small inkling of that sin to be able, while I'm correcting myself, to correct them." Rabbi said, don't try this at home. <laughs> but that's the logic of this methodology. Again, this is, this is an idea that's found in many Sifri Chassidus. So Moshe Abeno breaks the Luchos. He got angry. Why? Because when he gets angry, it's like Abba the Zara. Now he can be Masak in the Chet of Kal Yisrael. Another example. He did that on purpose in order to be able to have a little that's what, that's what it says in the Sefer. Chua Yisrael. If you're doing it on purpose, is he really angry or is he putting on an ad? You know, if he's consciously acting angry, is he really angry? Is he going to open it? Right now, again, I'm reporting to you, I'm reporting to you what it says in the Sefer told us Yaakov Yosef, and it's brought in the Sefer Chua Ischein also. By the way, the Noim Eli Melech, the Rebbe Ramech says a similar idea that it says. Why was the Malchus of Shoal? Why was it not Neskayim? So he brings in number 25. Amar Shmuel. Malchus 
They were perfect, and therefore they couldn't have kiyom. So Naimah Mecha sounds strange. You would think because they're perfect, they should have kiyom. So he brings in this idea as well, that in order to rectify the tzibor, you need to have a similar infraction to the tzibor. And Shaul was so perfect, he was mishichma yulamala gavaya me'akol ha'am, he could never connect to the people because he sure. never had... But David HaMelech, who had a similar shortcoming, even though David HaMelech, Milan Ugado Mi David, he, that allowed him to relate to the two. Again, that's what it says. So was too good for people. He's too good. He was too good. Too good. So the Shvile Pinchas, based on the above-mentioned ideas, suggests the following. Why did Hashem pass before Yaakov Avinu and sort of cause Yaakov to bow down to him and be over Maras Ayin? Why would Hashem want Yaakov to be Nikshal? The answer is, who? The answer is what? Listen carefully. That who's going to correct? What was the Avera Klai Yisrael did in the time of Nebuchadnezzar? They bowed down to the Tzalem. Who's going to rectify that? Mordechai. But how could Mordechai rectify that? If the if the if the manig if the gadol does not have a similar infraction, he can't correct their sin. So Hashem the Chachmasai made it that Yaakov Avinu should be nichshal even on a small degree b'maras ha'ayin. You know, but Hashem, why? You're causing him to be nichshal? The answer is we, we have to. Because in order to save Klal Yisrael in the times of Haman, because Klal Yisrael was nichshal in the Avera of bowing down to the Tselem, then we have to have the Manig be nichshal in some Avera. But Mordechai was never nichshal. Yeah, he was. Yaakov Avinu, his was earlier given, was nichshal by Maris He doesn't hold that behu. No, partner. it was Hashem. It just still... Our question, it shouldn't have been done because it was Maris Ayin. So why was Hashem Machshel him? Hashem had to be Machshel him. So to make him Mechuli of Badavar, to be able to be Moitzi as Harabim, Yidei Chayvasai. So then he says, it comes out very nice. Because actually, so you say, yeah, but that's not good enough. Because in, in the times of Nebuchadnezzar, they, they worshipped Avod Zara. And Yaakov didn't worship Avod Zara. Yaakov only, Yaakov only violated Maris Ha'ayin. Well, actually, Toysus in Avodah Zarah, on Dav Gimel, number 27, says that the Tselem of Nebuchadnezzar was not in Avodah Zarah. It was just a statue and the... So what was the Avera? Maris Ha'ayin. So in order for ya- Mordechai to be able to rectify that, he had to have a similar infraction, which indeed was in the times of Yaakov Avinu bowing down to Esav, the Maris Ha'ayin. So he says like this. So we inherit the sins of our Bibbon. No, you don't inherit it. Because, but uh, if you need to rec- No, no, we don't have a right that you inherit it. It just whatever sins were done previously would enable you to rectify other people's sins. So all of you Gedolim here, if you that you have to be Masaki in the sins of the generation, and you're saying, but since I didn't do any sins, I have no connection to the generation. So it could be in previous lifetimes, those sins will enable you to rectify the sins of the generation. Look at number 28. Yair Lanu Lahavin, it has been illuminated to us to understand why Kadesh Baruch is Masabev, that Yaakov should be able to bow down to Esav. Because when Yaakov comes to bow to Esav, He's very worried. He's very worried what's going to be with Haman. And that's why he davened, Hatsileni na miyad achi, which is Rosh Hashanah's Haman. And his tefillahs were neskabel b'shamayim. That what? That Yaakov, not only were, are we mekabel your tefillahs, you are going to be the shliach to save Klai Yisrael because, you, because Mordechai is a Gilgal of Yaakov. And the Yikr Tikkun is, for which Avera, the Avera that he bowed down to the Tselem, the problem is, and Yaakov, you know, had no pgam in that chet, how is he going to be able to masak in it? So what did Hashem do? He said, you're davening that you should be able to save Klai Yisrael. Look, you're too good. We're going to have to give you some kind of connection to them. So I'm going to pass by. You're going to be thinking you're bowing down to me, but it's going to look like you're bowing down to Haman, and now you're good to go. Now you're eligible to save 
your people lost the lava in the times of Purim. And especially, he brings down according to Tosun Avodah that was only a statue. So then, the only problem was, it looks like you're being Nishtachavah Le'elacher. So Yaakov Avinu was Mechoyev Badavar. And therefore, Mordechai, by not bowing down to Haman, and by being Yatsa B'Soy Chayir, by Yizak Saka G'day Lomara, he was able to be Masaki in the of Klai Sobar Avosai. Obviously, this all comes back to Parshas Tetzaveh, where the Tselem was activated by the Tzitz, which had the Shem Hashem on it, Rabbi Yisai. Afrei Lechem Purim, and Agun Shabbos. You've just experienced another Torah class, brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.